Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to do a brief review of the basic properties of complex numbers uh, so that in the subsequent videos we can take a look at how we write and utilize the polar form of complex numbers. So first just a reminder of what complex numbers are. Now complex numbers are of the form a plus bi and we call this bi, this is the imaginary part of the complex number. This a is the real part of the complex number and here b is going to be a real number and this i kind of acts as a qualifier. It says this is how much imaginary part I have in my complex number. Now we can use the ordered pair a b as a representation of exactly that idea uh, that I was just mentioning. We have a real part of the complex number and we have an imaginary part of the complex number. So when we graph complex numbers we do so in what we call the complex plane. So let's take a look at what a complex plane might look like. It looks a lot like an xy plane and we, use, we can use some rectangular coordinates here with a and b. But this horizontal axis we call this the real axis and this vertical axis we call the imaginary axis. So along the real axis we'll have numbers like 1, 2, 3, etc. And along the imaginary axis we'll have numbers like i, 2i, 3i, etc. And everything in between these axes are the combinations of all of these real and imaginary numbers. So if we have some number, let's say we have some number a plus bi out here, and the variable we usually use for complex numbers is the letter z. We use x and y for real numbers and z is usually reserved to indicate a complex number. You notice here I have REZIMZ -E so if this point A plus BI is some point Z REZ -E would be A and IMZ -E would be B. That's the real part of Z and the imaginary part of Z. And what this Z is, the way we measure it out is we're going to have a real part of A my number is A plus BI and I have an imaginary part of B so I look at this point BI and so you see we're using rectangular coordinates here. When we have a point in the form a plus bi, we mean that it's a distance along the real axis and b distance along the imaginary axis. So let's look at some kind of fill-in examples so we can get used to where these complex numbers lie. So let's graph these two sets, s equal to a plus bi, such that a is greater than or equal to zero. We'll take a look at that first and then we'll go to t over there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out my imaginary or my uh, complex plane. It's so my coordinate system here that we're going to be using. So this is my real axis. This is my imaginary axis. And we use the term imaginary. Um, imaginary numbers, they don't exist in nature. All imaginary numbers are the square roots of some negative real number and we know that that doesn't really make sense uh, in nature that never happens but there are they are very useful they're, they're not called imaginary because they're just figments of our imagination that we like to think about we can actually use complex numbers in a lot of real-world scenarios uh, to help do some very nice problems so taking a look at our set s I have a plus bi where a is greater than or equal to zero now notice I don't have any restrictions in my membership law here for B. So that means that B can be anything. B can be positive or negative. And A greater than or equal to zero is going to happen to the right of this imaginary axis. So I can go ahead and fill in this entire space here going off infinitely up, down, and right but never crossing to the left of this imaginary axis. All numbers over here have a negative A. And actually my imaginary axis is included in this set, isn't it? Because it's a greater than or equal to zero. So this is all part of the set here. Now taking a look at t, t is a plus bi. Let's go ahead and draw our coordinate system. Where a is less than or equal to zero and b is greater than or equal to zero. So this is my real axis and this is my imaginary axis. I have that a is less than or equal to zero. So I'm looking at numbers that are to the left of the imaginary axis. And I have b is greater than or equal to zero. So that means I'm looking at numbers that are above the real axis. So that's going to be everything here in quadrant two. 
is in my set T, isn't it? This is my T, and over here, this was my S. Okay, so just give us a little bit of orientation about um, where different numbers are falling in this complex plane. Now, complex numbers don't have an absolute value, and, and because of that, they don't actually have an order either. Uh, instead, complex numbers have what is called a modulus. And a modulus is the total distance from the complex number as a point to the origin. So let's go ahead and draw our axes. Oops, let's make this a straight line. So if I have some point out in space, say my point here, this is z, and z is equal to a plus bi for some a and b, my modulus is going to be this total distance from the origin to z right here. Now because I'm looking at a plus bi, that means that this vertical distance from my point z to the real axis has a length of b. This horizontal distance from the origin to where this line with length b intersects the real axis is a. And we see we have a right triangle here. We're going to have some angle theta, which we'll use later. But this distance up here, my modulus from the origin to z is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared from my Pythagorean theorem. So we denote this. We denote the modulus of z with the same symbol that we use for absolute value. And the modulus of z is always equal to a squared plus b squared. Now notice I don't have an i in here. I'm just looking at b. b is the total distance of this triangle as a real number, not as an imaginary number. I want to know the total distance from the origin to z as a real number. So we don't have any i's in the modulus. We don't have any i's when we calculate the modulus. Now we also have um, another relation here. This is very similar to what we did in polar coordinates, isn't it? In the next video we'll talk about polar coordinates. This is equal to z and we'll see that we also call this r when we're in polar form, just like we do with the real numbers. But let's take a look at some set problems with the modulus. Get used to what's happening with this modulus here. Let's say I want to graph the set S, which is the set of all z, such that the modulus of z is equal to 2. So let's go ahead and draw our real and imaginary axes. And I'm going to go ahead and denote out a distance of 2 along this real axis. So the set of all points that have a modulus of 2, well that's the same thing as saying all points that are a distance from the origin, a distance from the origin equal to 2. And that's a circle, isn't it? If I take a look at the set of all points that are a distance of 2 from the origin, that's a circle. All the points on this circle have a distance of exactly 2 from my origin. Now let's take a look at this set T. I draw my axes out again. This set T is all points Z that have a modulus greater than or equal to 2. So let's go ahead and write out our 2. 1, 2. I'm going to draw a circle again. I have a circle, so this we know this is from the set S. This is all of my points that have a modulus exactly equal to 2. Now everything inside of this circle is closer to the origin than the circle. And we know the circle means a modulus of 2, so if a point's closer to the origin, that means its modulus is less than 2. If a point is outside of this circle, that means it's further away than 2 from the origin. So my set T, oh, my set T is going to be everywhere in this complex plane that's outside of the unit circle. This is my set T, and this goes on forever in all directions and includes the circle as well, but doesn't include any of the points inside the circle. And this over here, this was set S. Just the circle itself is the set S. 
Okay, so that's a brief review of what a complex number looks like and what the modulus of a complex number is, and we're going to use this in the next video now to start talking about the polar form of a complex number. We'll see you there.